I'm here for our first interview of the day with Dave Wilkes, President and CEO at Building Industry and Land Development Association, otherwise known as BUILD. Dave, thanks so much for joining us at the OHBA conference. And uh, we are here to talk to you about development charges, a controversial subject in, uh, in the world of real estate today. Let's start off with how development charges have increased in the past decade. So, Nick, thank you very much for the opportunity. It's uh, great to be here. The, uh, the conference is great. I uh, just came out of a, uh, a great panel at OHBA, hosted with, I think, seven uh, representatives of provincial ministries, including uh, six ministers. So the, uh, the energy is really strong here. Yeah. And the energy around talking about what it's going to take to build the 1.5 million homes that Ontarians need is... Uh, it's palatable and you can feel it and we're having a different conversation uh, than we ever had and I and I think that conversation I will get to your question is because the industry is in a bit of a state of challenge right now mm-hmm. sales have stopped we're just people aren't buying homes and there's two root causes for that one the cost to build is just too high yeah and people within our industry can't build homes that people can afford and obviously the changes that we've seen in monetary policy around interest rate where you know if you are able to buy a home uh, the the cost to carry is too high but even if you fix the interest rates even if you some of the great work that uh, has happened from our colleagues at the canadian home builders association to extend amortization rates that's not still fixing the cost to build Mm -hmm. and that's where i think the dc discussion is a really important one if you look at what it costs to build a home, you got to finance the uh, the land and the building uh, from the builder's perspective. The materials that go in, and there's been tremendous increases in materials, uh, labor, all of those things are influenced by market conditions. So they'll go up and down with supply and demand. They're stickier on the way down than they are on the way up, but that's the case. Development charges and other government fees and taxes that are put in place, like parkland charges, uh, education development charge, the HST, which is another that what we could talk, as well as development charges, are now representing about 25% of a cost of a new home. Yeah. So if you look at that from a you know a person's mortgage, you're taking a quarter of it, you know, yeah. seven eight years just to pay off the government fees and taxes. Yeah. And so I really think what we need, and and what I'm hearing is we have to have a different conversation around DCs development charges that are designed to pay for the costs associated with growth. That's where they where they were originally designed from. That conversation needs to uh, happen on, are DCs working? Are they going up too fast and too much? And are they the right tool for municipalities to fund uh, the growth-related services that they need? And are municipalities the only government that should be funding that? We believe that the answer to those questions is no, the DC's time is done, and we need to have a different conversation about them. Long answer, but it gives you some context. No, great. I, I appreciate the context and, and great insights. And I, I think myself and, and a lot of people in the industry are, are on the same page finally about mm-hmm. this stuff, right? Now, you recently put, a, your organization recently put out a study on development charges. Walk us through some of the key findings in that study and how you think they will eventually have an impact on house prices here in Ontario and then maybe in in Canada overall. Right. So we're we're about to actually, uh, uh, two days away from putting out our... our This is the teaser for it. You know, coming soon to (laughs) a a newspaper or a broadcast near you. Uh, So on uh, Wednesday, we're actually releasing our biannual look at uh, government fees and charges and approval timelines. Uh, so it's a benchmarking uh, study. Uh, BUILD is uh, focused on the GTA, so it's looking mm-hmm. at the municipalities within the greater Toronto area. And you know what we are finding, and I'll just give you two numbers I'll quote. In the last two years alone, on average, across the GTA, uh, DCs have gone up $45,000 uh, uh, in the last two years, exactly, <laughs> at a time when the when the economy's not been, you know, firing on the least. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, $36,000 uh, for a condo, once again, on average. Um, Mississauga's fees have gone up 57%, Toronto 44, Oshawa 61. So we're seeing the, the trend go on. Now, I will say we're seeing beginnings of an understanding that these costs are un, unsustainable. Mm-hmm. Uh, the city of Vaughan, uh, recently uh, Mayor Del Duca there passed a motion uh, looking at staff to report back on how to lower DCs by 25%. 
uh, we've seen Burlington take a hard look at their most recent increase. Now, it still was an increase, but it wasn't as much as they had originally planned. Um, we were in conversations across the GTA saying, look, we got a problem. Sales in the GTA in August were historically low. Um, they were like well below the 10 year average. And, and, and that's in an environment where interest rates moderate, where we're seeing amortization announcements that you can carry the, the loan over a 30 year period. People still can't afford. And so I think governments are recognizing that they have to be part of the solution. And what the paper is going to highlight is the fact that, you know, DCs are still too high. Approval times are still too long, Nick, if I could just deviate into that. 21 months, 21 months it takes on average. Now, there have been some improvements, once again, I, and the conversation is happening. But we need to, you know, Minister Klander talked about, you know, uh, quicker, quicker, quicker. We need those improvements quicker. And we need that uncertainty that we're going to see timelines come down substantially because time is money, truly, in this case. So what we're going to do with this paper is shine a light. But more importantly, we're going to have conversations with our uh, municipal partners and uh, with those of the province and the federal government around. Let's look at a different way, back to what we are talking about, of how we fund growth and how the DC tool is no longer the right tool to fund that growth, and we need different ways of doing it. I couldn't agree. Now, you mentioned a lot of great things in there from, you know, the extension and amortization and, and just permitting processes and, and just the length of time it takes. When we're talking about D.C. specifically and, and the government maybe finally realizing that, you know, they have to make the change and it can't just be the industry because we rely heavily on legislation. What are some solutions? If you could leave us with this, what are some solutions that you're seeing and, and that your organization and, and other organizations here at OHBA and, and CHBA and across the country that, that we're working towards and, and trying to, to change and, and bring into the system to, to actually see this? Well, let me bucket that into two, immediate and a little longer term stru structurally. Uh, structurally, we've talked a lot about, Nick, like how do you take a look at a system that was in place for growth, funding growth? And DC's funding that growth. And, and, I, and I, I've heard encouraging conversations that we know that that model needs to, needs to change. Mm -hmm. Growth in the way it's currently constructed, it's, the burden is too high. To it's not growth. sustainable, right? We've, not we're not realizing that the hard way. So, so you've seen some investments, substantive investments, excuse me, from the federal and the provincial government on funding water and wastewater. And so that takes the burden off of the new homeowner directly for that and places it on a much bigger base. I think that's really key. We're looking at ways, uh, and another paper that we're going to be releasing, um, a timeline uh, to be determined, but either later this year or the first quarter of 25, is a really hard look at the D.C. regime. And so I'd love to come back and talk to you about that uh, when we when we're, uh, got that work finalized. And we're going to be engaging with municipalities on that conversation. Right, because we know that uh, municipalities have needs. Our industry wants to build homes that people can actually purchase and afford. So how do we work together to do that? So the structural one is having a honest conversation about funding growth. And we've seen the, the beginning of that with the infrastructure investments that we've uh, seen from our provincial and federal colleagues and, and the recognition that it can't be all in the back of new homeowners. Immediately, I think we need to call on municipalities that and I, I have a phrase that I'm using too much right now, zero, zero, zero. <laughs> so if you're not collecting DCs because no one's, you know, the, the starts that I really worry about Nick, is, and I have to take a deep breath when I say this, in 27 and 28, this, today's sales are two to three to four years starts out. And, you know, you do see, once again, with my bias in the GTA, you know, starts are continuing. You are still seeing buildings getting built, but they're finishing up. And those are sales that were occurred back when there was a very different monetary policy environment back when, you know, we were coming out or in the pandemic. 27, 28, 000 on DCs. So what do we do now? to anticipate that change? What relief do we have on government fees and taxes? How do we take a mindset of, of, of addressing a crisis of affordability in the same way we look at, you know, let me give you an example, investing in EV uh, battery manufacturers. 
what type of investments can government make, government make today to lower the cost to build directly by addressing government fees and taxes. That's about indexing the HST rebates, which haven't been indexed since they were originally brought in, in since 1991. The cost, you don't get a federal rebate on your home from HST if your home is over $450,000. Can't find a home in the GTA for that. Where, yeah, yeah, where do those? And exist? They yeah. don't. Not in the GTA. <laughs> so we're calling on you know that that indexing rate to be uh, increased. What happens if there is a holiday on DCs for a short period of time? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's Christmas yeah, for yeah. developers. Right. Yeah. Well, so what what can we know, do today? And, 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 and sorry to jump on that, Nick. It's not for developers that it would be that relief. Uh, if you lower the cost to build, if you exempt the extend the rate, it trickle down. Sure. It trickles yeah. up. Trickle and it trickles, trickles, trickles down. down. That's a industry wide, but not even just industry. That's Canada wide right. and and GTA, GTHA. Yeah. yeah for sure. So so that's what we're looking at: immediate relief that impacts the cost to build, and structural change that looks at a different way to fund growth. Amazing. Thank you so much for stopping by, Dave. It's uh, always great to see you and great to hear your insights. We will be having you back for those other two studies. Thank you for. Uh, tuning in and um thank you for all the work anytime i uh these are important conversations i'm passionate about and, and uh, i believe we need to uh we need to bring facts to the table and solutions to the table and that's builds a uh, commitment to our our stakeholders and the folks that are looking to uh, make the gta their home wonderful thank you thank you very much